When I was a child, way back in the last century, a milkman delivered six glass quart bottles of milk into a little metal container each week that sat outside our back door. And on those milk bottles, along with the name of the dairy that the milk came from, was a sort of poem-like thing, a little missive on how to live a good life. And as my sisters and I dug our spoons into our Cap'n Crunch at the breakfast table each morning, we read the back of those milk bottles again and again, until we memorized those words. And they went like this. Take time to work. It is the price of success. Take time to read. It is the foundation of wisdom. Take time to think. It is the source of power. Take time to play. It is the secret of perpetual youth. Take time to laugh. It is the music of the soul. Take time to be friendly. It is the road to happiness. Take time to dream. It is hitching your wagon to a star. And of course, the last line read, take time to drink Meadowbrook Dairy Farm milk for a long and healthy life. <laughs> and perhaps it was this missive, and particularly its directive to take time, that began my preoccupation with it, that soon bloomed into an obsession. I am obsessed with time. How does it work? How does it work? Is it linear? Is it holographic? Why does it sometimes seem to speed by, and sometimes crawl, and sometimes disappear altogether, depending on the situation at hand and our emotions associated with it? I find these questions endlessly fascinating, and I ponder them all the time. And several years ago, it occurred to me that whenever I feel stress, somehow time is the culprit. I'm late or too late. I'm ahead of time or ahead of my time. I'm impatient waiting for someone else. I'm worried that they're waiting on me. An opportunity went by so fast I missed it, or something took so long to manifest, I gave up in frustration. The worst of this stress for me has always been when I feel like I'm running out of time. More than anything, I notice the wisdom of that wild rabbit, the March Hare in Alice in Wonderland, who exclaimed, the hurrier I go, the behinder I get. So I decided I was going to try to experiment and see if I could stretch time. My idea was that if time was so malleable that it could either speed or slow, then maybe I could work that malleability and stretch it. And if the worst of my stress came when I felt like I was running out of time, then if I could stretch it then, I would have more of it. My office is a 15-minute drive from my home. And I like to get to my office at least 15 minutes before my first client. I like to settle in, I like to set up, uh, create a sort of ambiance in the room, a vibe, if you will, of unhurried welcoming for my clients to enter into. So I always leave at least half an hour before my first appointment. And usually I leave earlier than that because you never know what you're going to encounter on a commute, and I don't like to rush, and I don't like to be late. So one morning, when my first appointment was at noon, I was engrossed in my work at the computer at home, and I looked up to see the clock said 11.36. Uh-oh, I was six minutes late. Now, I wasn't actually late, because I still had enough time to drive to my office before that noon appointment, but I was already six minutes later than I normally am at the very latest. And on this day in particular, I wanted to stop at the grocery store and pick up a fresh bunch of flowers, which is also part of how I create the ambiance in my office. But I said to myself, well, you're not stopping for flowers today. You're already late. As soon as I heard myself tell me how late I was, I began to feel that familiar stress response rising in my body. And it reminded me, oh, yes. You were going to try to stretch time when you felt like this. So I took a deep, slow breath. I 
I saved what I was working on. I closed my laptop. I found my appointment book and I put it in my bag. I checked my lipstick. <laughs> I walked to the coat closet, I shrugged on my jacket, I took the keys off the hook. As I started to drive away, I noticed my foot was getting very heavy on the gas pedal. I was automatically speeding up to make up for lost time. I was hurrying up to catch time, which is the exact opposite of what you must do when you're trying to stretch it. So I deliberately eased my foot off the gas pedal. I watched the speedometer go from 45 down to 35 miles per hour. As I drove along, I thought, you know, if you really want to push this experiment, you'll stop for the flowers anyway. <laughs> so I did. I drove to the grocery store, which is along the way, but still a bit of a detour. I parked the car. I walked into the store at an unhurried pace. I found the floral department. I chose a pretty bunch of red Alstroemeria. I walked over to assess, is the checkout line or the self-checkout line going to be faster? Self-checkout it is. But I still had to wait for someone to complete their transaction. Then I completed my transaction. As I left the grocery store, I noticed I was starting to rush, and I slowed myself down. I drove the rest of the way to my office at the speed limit. I parked the car, and when I got inside and looked up at the clock, it said 10 to noon, which means I left almost 20 minutes later than I wanted to. I still made an extra stop, and I still had 10 minutes to spare, including driving that 15 minutes. I kept thinking the batteries must have stopped on the clock and also on my watch, but no, the clocks hadn't stopped. By slowing down, I'd been successful. I had stretched time. I kept thinking, I must be dreaming this up. But repetition proved otherwise. So I kept experimenting, because I had saved myself 10 minutes, which doesn't seem like much, but I was onto something. In each experiment, I would go as slowly as I possibly could. And I found that I was never late, I never ran out of time, my anxiety virtually disappeared. It sounds like magic. I think it might be magic. So I would set aside an amount of time I knew a task would take, and then I would experiment by slowing down, and what I found was that these tasks were taking less than half the time, half the time or less than half the time. For example, an essay I needed to write, which usually takes about four hours, took less than two. I set aside an hour to pack for a big trip I was taking. It took less than 20 minutes. My grocery shopping time virtually shrunk down to nothing as I slowly walked the aisles, slowly selecting each apple, slowly reaching for the carton of eggs. Now, stretching time is different than being present in the moment. And being present in the moment is very important to do because most of us are living our lives either projected into an imaginary future or stuck somewhere in our past. So cultivating the practice of present in the moment is a worthy endeavor. But stretching time is something different altogether because when you stretch time, you have more of it in the present moment. And you do that by slowing down by constantly reminding yourself, slow down. By asking yourself, how long can I make this last? By challenging yourself, how slowly can you go? How slowly can you make this meal instead of how fast can we get it on the table? How slowly can you peel this carrot? How slowly can you eat the meal? How long can we take to clean up after the meal? How slowly can I mow the lawn, weed the garden? How slowly can I balance my checkbook and pay the bills? 
you know, I found it works particularly well on tasks that I'd rather avoid and that I don't like, because when you slow down to stretch time, the task takes less. And of course, on the tasks we really enjoy, more time is always welcome. We are living in very accelerated times. The technology that was supposed to save us so much time, that was supposed to free up so much of our, of our time, has done the complete opposite. It has become a thief of our time. Think about how much time you lose or waste with your eyes on some electronic screen. Your cell phone, the telephone, your desktop, your laptop, your Kindle, your tablet, your what have you. There is a theory that time itself is speeding up. And the prevailing wisdom is that we are running out of time on a healthy planet. And thus alarmed, our stress is overwhelming. I believe the answer is to slow down, to stretch time, so we'll have more of it to implement the solutions we are surely finding. Time is not something we are given. It's something we must take. And in the taking, time is something we can stretch. Thank you. <laughs>